Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about art and AI. A couple of years ago, it might have been very strange to talk about AI uh, and art in the same context. But nowadays, it's becoming more of a, a common thing. So um, my background is I am a computer scientist um, doing AI for the last 25 years, in particular doing uh, computer vision, which is the field of AI that look at images and try to understand their content. So me and other AI scientists would be very happy if we look at images like that and uh, we understand there is a man, there is a woman, there are fruits, there are cats, cars, horses. That's what we do, that's in AI. However, um, if you look at art, it's very different because we as humans, when you look at art, that's not what we're looking for. I mean, that's obvious things that we recognize are a man and a woman, but there are uh, multiple levels of understanding related to our social uh, life, historical context, and even um, uh, how the art affect our emotions. So it's a very, very sophisticated thing when you look at art that definitely AI cannot do. Um, um, nowadays, most of, of the shelf AI, if you give it images like that, most probably it will, you, it will tell you it's a stuffed animal. It's um, um, anything but other than understanding deeply what's art, what art is. So that led me uh, about seven years ago to establish the art and AI lab at uh, Rutgers University, where we have been looking uh, at problems related to understanding uh, art and style and genres and, and uh, influence in art and creativity and, uh, and many things in this domain. Uh, I'm gonna talk about a couple of things we have been doing. Um, so a um, few years ago, we developed a system that tried to understand the element of art and that leads to something very interesting. Um, for example, this system can look at lots of art, millions of artworks, and, and bring together things that nobody have looked at side by side. Like this pair, pair of images here, one uh, at, the, uh, at the left is uh, an artwork by the French artist Basil, called the Artist Studio, um, and at the right is Norman Rockwell, the Barber Shop, about 70 years apart, different continents, different styles, different movements. But the machine bring them together as very, similar, um, and we look at them carefully, and why is that? And if you look carefully, you can see there are three men in the left room, there are three in the left image, there are three men in the right image, there's a big window here, big window there, there's a chair here, chair here, oven here, oven here, here. even the stairs going up to the left of the frame is similar to the uh, tilted frame in, in the right, so it's a striking similarity between the composition and placement of object and subject, uh, although different subject matter and, and, and different styles. Uh, so I'm not an art historian, I can not tell you what that means. Is there an influence between Norman Rockwell, Rockwell and this uh, art by Basil? But definitely no art historian have ever looked at these two things side by side. And this really, the, what, um, the interesting thing for me is that this is what the machine can do now. It can really look at art and understand it at, at um, a little bit sophisticated level. Another important result here is this uh, uh, figure here. Here, actually, uh, we trained um, um, the machine uh, using deep learning to understand styles. So basically, uh, train it to uh, classify between Renaissance and Baroque and Impressionist. And our interest, not really the classification, our interest was to look how the machine do that and how, if that related to the art historian methodology. And very interesting things uh, appear out of that. One of them is that the machine find out that there are two factors that explain what happened in art history in the last 500 years in the Western uh, uh, civilization, Western art history. Um, and, and, and this plot here show uh, basically what happened in art history in the last uh, uh, 500 years. And more, most, more interestingly, the machine actually arranged art history uh, in a chronological order by itself. We never give the machine anything about when art was made, a piece of art was made, anything about Renaissance happened before Baroque, uh, or impression is happening in the 19th century or, to, uh, or 20th century. Uh, we never give it anything about in dates, but by itself, it arranged art history in such a way that you see here, if you go uh, uh, clockwise in this diagram, you can see Renaissance moving to Baroque, moving to realism, moving to impressionism in the top, and you see Cezanne coming after that, and then uh, uh, modernism, uh, uh, abstract art, and all the way to uh, pop art, closing the loop in these diagrams. Very interesting uh, observation here, many, many interesting things we can see, how the machine understand uh, art of progression. So uh, we are getting to the point where um, AI can really look at art and, and discover many interesting things. 
And here comes the question, can the machine create art? Can the machine become creative? So let me show this clip. It's really cool. So who painted it? A machine. It's actually the first work of art made by AI to be sold at Sotheby's. Sorry, I'm like Dana, I got caught. All right, that was uh, from the HBO Silicon Valley se uh, series um, last year. And that piece of art there actually is done by a machine using uh, the ICANN algorithm that we developed that uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, now. Uh, so um, in the last few years, there have been a lot of interest in using AI to make art. And these are all artworks by different artists, including uh, Tom White, Mario Klingman, uh, Anna, and Robbie Barrett. So uh, lots of uh, interesting uh, uh, and amazing artwork have been developed by these artists and others. How, how, how artists use AI to make art? Um, this is uh, our version of AI generation, which is uh, more autonomous uh, and machine generating art by itself. Uh, uh, I'm going to explain how. How can we uh, generate art using AI? Basically, um, imagine you train a machine, some AI, and give it lots of uh, uh, artwork. Can it generate something creative, or going to be only emulating what exists uh, in, uh, in art? This is the question, and that's what really what happens. Uh, but let me step back and explain how art is made using AI nowadays. First, art has been made using AI since the dawn of AI 50 years ago. There's nothing new. Uh, uh, there is a new wave of AI in making art uh, started by uh, what's called GAN, uh, Generative Adversarial Network, which is a, a deep learning model that is able to synthesize uh, images from random. So how this work, basically, um, this uh, network contains two components, two layers. Uh, one is called generator, which will just generate images from random, just random images. And the other is called the critic, which will have access to some data. For example, you give it images of cats. And now the generator has to guess uh, and generate an image of a cat from random. Doesn't see any cat, just generate a random image. So imagine it generates a random image, give it to the critic, and the critic tells it, no, it's not a cat. Now, given that signal, it tries to improve. And after many, many iterations, it will try to uh, generate something that looks like cats. That's how GANs work. Imagine now you give these GANs artwork, art from art history. Will it generate anything that's artistic? Maybe. So uh, at the top here, we show what a GAN, a typical GAN, will generate if we give it classical portraits. As you see, it generates a lot of uh, distorted uh, portraits. In some sense, it reminds us of uh, the portraits in the bottom from Francis Bacon, uh, which is, uh, has this deformed nature. So, but there's a big difference here. So Francis Bacon intentionally make these portraits deformed to convey some message intentionally, while the machine created this deformed portrait basically because it failed to make correct portrait. So again, here is trying to uh, make a portrait given what it sees, but fails. And from that, that comes the aesthetics of most AI art that we see right, right, right now. The AI art surprised us because of this deformation happens because of the machine failure. However, the machine here didn't intend to do that and uh, definitely is not constructively doing anything creative. It's just emulating and fails in the emulation. So uh, before moving forward, I want to discuss basically uh, uh, who is the artist here. Uh, so definitely the artist in this process comes in pre-curation, what is the data set to give it to the algorithm, tweaking the algorithm, and both curating the result to choose what to show that the world. So at the end, it's an artistic process uh, that involves artists in making art. And uh, definitely, uh, AI is a tool here. So let me move out right away to how to make the machine creative a little bit, um, moving from being generative to being creative. And here we developed basically a variant of GAN that's called Creative Adversarial Network. And the basic concept is basically based on the psychology of aesthetics. So imagine you are an artist living in a late 19th century after Impressionism, and you have seen lots of Impressionist art already. It doesn't excite you anymore like this uh, great art by Sicily after Impressionism, like Kim Cezanne and Van Gogh and other post-Impressionist artists that try to make something new. Uh, so that's because of habituation. You, you kind of see the same art again and again. You have to really do something new. So comes an artist like Picasso in, 19, uh, in 1907, come and, and shock uh, the, the artist uh, uh, in his, uh, uh, in his uh, circle by, by his innovation. So artist always has to innovate to to basically uh, uh, push against habituation. And this is basically what drives art forward. This is exactly what we have done here using um, uh, our autonomous artist, ICANN, where we give it all art history 
And in one hand, uh, it has to learn how to follow the aesthetics, but on the other hand, it has to really push and uh, create something that doesn't, doesn't fit any existing styles, something novel. And from that, it started generating all these amazing works that we have been showing in different exhibitions in the past. Um, so let me actually make a little touring test uh, for you to see if you can tell the difference between art made by autonomous AI or art actually by artists. Uh, raise your hand if you think this is done by an AI. All right, this is done by an artist. Raise your hand if you think it's AI. Doing good. That's uh, our algorithm. AI. That's a human artist. AI. Human artist. AI. It is AI. AI. It is AI. AI, yes, AI, yes, no, no, more, no much hands are raised. So uh, basically, it gives the point that um, we uh, are, um, can do actually autonomous art now that you cannot tell whether it's done by AI or not. So what's next? Uh, so let me skip through this. So where we are going now? Um, how can AI can change the way art is made? Um, so basically, as I said, AI now is becoming a tool that um, can be used, and um, we are developing a tool now that's called Playform that any artist can use, where you can plug in their uh, inspiration for the project and their aesthetics, and then push a button without any coding needed, and the machine starts to generate iterations of work uh, based on uh, their ideas, and from that, they can choose what they want and iterate. Anyway, I have to stop here. Um, thank you very much, and I hope that was useful. Thank you.